Okay, today we are going to talk about holidays. Well, uh, for the beginning, uh, we'll see a short video clip uh, with the topic Dream Holiday. Your task is to open your notebooks and write five places kids describe as dream holidays. So it's about the names of the places. My favourite places to go on holiday are England, Fiji and Australia. It's just, Australia is amazing. My favourite place to go on holiday is Queenstown because there's lots of new activities and places you can visit every time. My favourite place to go on holiday um, was probably to Italy because they have beautiful views, lots of really nice food and lots of good shopping. If I could go anywhere on holiday, I'd probably go to Canada and have a ski season. My dream holiday would be to go to Paris because they've got really nice food and in Paris I would love to see the Eiffel Tower. My dream holiday would be the United States because it's fun and there's lots of things to do. I would probably go to Africa and do a safari. If I had all the money in the world I would probably visit Paris and France because I really like their views and their baguettes. <laughs> I like chocolate baguettes. <laughs> Wait, what are those croissants? Croissants, yeah. Okay, so I agree with the most suggestions that they said. Okay, so I hope you have your five uh, places in your notebooks. Later on, please take a, a picture and send it to me as homework. Okay, now please open your books. The title is uh, Speak English and Have a Great Holiday. Now we are facing a new unit and a new lesson. It's lesson one. So for the beginning, uh, here there are uh, six pictures of some holiday spots. Uh, can you identify them? And what do they all have in common? I'm not sure I can identify all of them, but uh, the thing that they have in common is there are no people. Okay. Now, um, we are going to talk about three amazing holiday spots. The first one's Canada. Uh, please listen. Uh, listen to the... To the text and uh, try to follow either in your uh, notebooks or no track 55 oh, this is not it sorry come just a moment please okay yeah this one follow unit seven school is over lesson one Speak English and have a great holiday. Track 54 Amazing Holiday Spots, Canada This is not the United States' boring neighbor, but the second largest country in the world with tons of fun things to do and see. If you are into winter sports, you'll really enjoy Canada. Ice hockey is the national sport, and curling is also popular. The spectacular Niagara Falls, one of the largest waterfalls in the world and one of the seven wonders of the world, are only one and a half hours away from Toronto, Canada's largest city. If you visit the snowy north, you will see the dazzling northern lights, which is the Earth's natural light show. And this is the country where you can go whale watching in many different places. Humpbacks on the coast of the Atlantic Ocean, mammoth blue whales on the St. Lawrence River, or the magnificent killer whales near Vancouver Island. Anyone who loves an adventure can enter Iceberg Alley in the summer and see icebergs the size of huge buildings. You know what happened to the Titanic, but you probably don't know it happened there. Australia Australia is not only about sunshine, barbecue and Christmas parties on the beach, one of its greatest attractions is Ayers Rock in Northern Territory, the world's largest monolith and a very sacred place to the Aborigines, the native population of Australia. If you visit the country's largest city, Sydney, 
Don't miss seeing the famous Sydney Opera House. Among the many golden beaches stretching from the north to the south, Bondi Beach in the suburbs of Sydney is the most famous one. If you're keen on surfing, this is paradise, but watch out for strong currents, sharks and jellyfish. If you want to explore the marine world, visit the Great Barrier Reef, which is the longest coral reef in the world. With over 1,000 species of tropical fish and other sea creatures, and 200 varieties of coral, the best way to explore the reef is to snorkel or scuba dive. If you want to see kangaroos, visit Kangaroo Island, or you can walk with penguins and meet koalas at Phillip Island Nature Park near Melbourne. If you're planning to visit Canberra, the country's capital, don't miss the Canberra Balloon Fiesta when hot air balloons of all shapes and sizes fill Canberra's skies. New Zealand Russell Crowe was born there, the Lord of the Rings was filmed there, and there are 100 million sheep there, which is much more than its whole population. New Zealanders call themselves Kiwis, but the original New Zealanders are the Maoris, who are known for their moko, their body and face tattoos. A large part of New Zealand consists of snow-capped mountains, so it's perfect for snowboarding or skiing in the winter. Kiwis love sports, especially rugby, but New Zealand is one of the best places in the world for adventure sports. It is the home of bungee jumping and several extreme sports, including whitewater rafting. Its biggest tourist attraction is Rotorua, which smells of rotten eggs because of all the sulphur, but it has natural bubbling mud pools and geysers. There are also some amazing caves, which are seen in the Lord of the Rings, glaciers and strange birds called kias, which eat tents and shoes. There are 76 species of whales and dolphins on the planet, and New Zealand is where you can see almost half of them. Okay. Um, now, just one more um, film for New Zealand. Enjoy. The Kaitariti Spit, a nearly 30 kilometre long deposit of cobbles and shingle is one of the most fascinating landforms on New Zealand's coastline. The story of how the spit came about is tightly bound up with the story of many other landforms in the region. The formation of the spit is in fact the last of many events that, together, have produced the look of the landscape as it is today. 100 million years ago, no spit, no plains, no volcanoes, no mountains. Then, 26 million years ago, two plates collided and the New Zealand Alps were thrust up. Another plate movement caused lots of earthquakes and the volcanoes sprouted. Two million years ago, the temperature dropped and New Zealand got its ice age. 12,000 years ago, the ice melted and left behind thick deposits of drift that became the plains and the coast itself. Material eroded from the cliffs gets transported along the coast in the direction of wave attack. If there's a bend in the coast, the material carries on, forming a spit, the Kaitariti spit. The spit is a perfect reminder of a crucial fact about physical geography. Although it often doesn't look like it, landforms are always changing and on the move. Rocks actually travel. Those on the Kaitariti spit are mainly a rock with the strange name of Greywacki, exactly the same rock from which the New Zealand Alps were formed. It's interesting to imagine what kind of a journey a single lump of Greywacki might have made. Could have been shaken off the top of a mountain by an earthquake, then brought down in a landslide, then carried down the mountain in a glacier, then picked up by a river and brought to the sea, then transported by longshore drift from a hundred kilometres. It's a very illegal story. OK. 
Okay, I enjoyed it because I'm a geography fan very much. Okay, so, um, yeah, where do, did we stop? We stopped here at New Zealand. Now you're going to watch, uh, uh, yeah, please um, and, uh, turn uh, page 126, 126 in your books. There is a memory check. So your task is just to match the following sentences without looking at the text, if you can. If you need any help, then you go back one page and search for help. Yeah. Uh, one more movie. Okay. Again, about New Zealand, since we are focusing on it. Kia ora! Na mai ki Zealand hao! This means hello and welcome to New Zealand. New Zealand is a country in the Pacific Ocean. Across the Tasman Sea is Australia. It isn't a small country. It's similar in size to the British Isles. There are two big islands, the North Island and the South Island. There are also 600 smaller islands. The capital city of New Zealand is Wellington. But it's not the biggest city. The biggest city is Auckland, my hometown. Auckland is a multicultural city. That means the people from all over the world come and live here. It is the only city in the world that lies on an active volcanic field. In many of the city's parks, you can see volcanic cones. New Zealand is a beautiful country, isn't it? Did you know that the famous Lord of the Rings films were filmed here? here are called New Zealanders, but they have a nickname too, Kiwis. Do you know why? The Kiwi bird is the symbol of New Zealand. This special bird doesn't fly. The Maori were the first people who lived in New Zealand. And then the Europeans came. The British colonised New Zealand. That's why there are two official languages. English and Maori. You can study Maori at schools. I'm starting this year. Okay, and the final thing for today is your homework. Now, what you have to do is uh, just try to find it. Uh, yeah, you'll get a PDF document which you have to deal with um, for your homework. So please don't work with your friend, you can work alone. Um, answer the questions in your notebooks, one, two, three. Also copy the flag and also color it. Uh, read these statements and uh, write down in, copy them of course, and write uh, if they are true or false. Next one, uh, copy. You don't have to copy this, but copy the puzzle into your notebooks and please solve it. And also write down the uh, solutions to these three photographs. Can you label the pictures? Also, a reminder for you for homework, PDF document, notebook, take a picture and upload in your map. Deadline Tuesday. 20, 100. Okay. Bye. See ya.